often thought of air conditioning or artificial cooling of a building as an end in itself. However, if we introspect, air conditioning or artificial cooling is a means to an end. What is then the end goal of our building design? We had addressed this in the first part of our training session about heat transfer, that the goal of building design should be to provide comfort to the occupants or rather thermal and visual comfort. This part of the training addresses that end goal and the need to achieve this and focus on this rather than focusing on the technology or the air conditioning systems that are used to achieve this. Let's understand thermal comfort a little bit more elaborately and in a granular manner. <coughs> Teachers will again often have difficulty addressing this technical subject with their architecture students who might be a little averse to deal with the specific physics phenomenon that are involved with thermal comfort and including that in design etc. Here are some interesting activity based or debate based ideas which can be utilized by teachers to generate interest, motivation and empathy for the subject and its centrality um, that we believe it should have in the process of building design. So here are some dialogues that can be conducted or stimulated in the earlier parts of a semester long course to generate interest in the idea of thermal comfort as the end goal rather than being focused on the means which is a technology such as air conditioning. So a interesting debate to have would be are we through our methods of cooling spaces perpetuating a certain amount of injustice in our marginalized excluded communities who are being deprived of basic thermal comfort which is the comfort that you get from windows and fans because of the excess amount of thermal comfort or actually thermal discomfort that we feel when we consume commercial spaces. Uh, it's quite commonplace um, in all our lives to have visited a movie theater for example or a restaurant imagining that it's going to be so cold even if it's summer outside inside these excessively cool spaces it's like winter and we often carry something like a shawl with us uh, which is a, a real travesty because not only are we are not comfortable we are also perpetuating thermal discomfort to the less privileged people outside these spaces. So this could be an interesting debate. We can also have a debate about the exacerbating influence of air conditioning on the need for air conditioning the, the subsequent year. So say in a certain year the number of people in your neighborhood start increasing the number of air conditioners that they have bought and if they start using these air conditioners very liberally throughout the year the next year is most likely going to see an increased occurrence of heat island effects or heat waves if this phenomenon is perpetuated across the, the entire country for example. Thereby indicating that air conditioning creates what are called negative feedback loops in the sense that air conditioning generates its own demand which is then usually satisfied with more air conditioning which just compounds the problem year after year. So there's no escape. So this could be an interesting debate. Another interesting debate that could be carried out in a classroom story, uh, story circle format or perhaps even in a neighboring corporate park with corporate citizens could be storytelling around the idea of feeling physically sick and uh, it, you know, in a state of uh, extreme discomfort because of the enclosed icebox like environment that exists in a lot of modern buildings now. Uh, the, the concept of sick building syndrome and speaking about how it is becoming a legitimate problem and a thing to be addressed to perhaps deconstructing the kind of building designs that we are currently um, undertaking or, or using for making our buildings. So there could be storytelling around that. One could also uh, have storytelling sessions with again uh, students who might have experienced it in their own lives or if not we can go to our neighboring corporate offices and try to probe them and, and elicit their ideas on this idea of thermal discomfort where 
rather than feeling joyous and and feeling like uh, a sense of uh, being welcomed in a in an office space they feel repelled because of the thermal discomfort and the excessive amount of air conditioning or even inadequate air conditioning that they might have been experiencing a very interesting and possibly inflammatory debate that uh, a teacher could use to generate a lot of interest and mobilize a lot of opinions amongst their students could be this idea of thermal comfort for the whole world being defined by one nation and one body type which is the white caucasian male which has as a matter of fact uh, dominated the whole discourse around what is comfort and what is discomfort and it has directly influenced the design of every air conditioner that we have seen around us is that fact disturbing and acceptable for um, for students of this uh, of this era or as building designers of this era who have begun critically analyzing and questioning many of the presuppositions of the world around us to try and make it a fairer and safer space uh, safer place for all of us to live in so this could be a uh, a process of we could start the process of deconstructing these these entrenched notions another debate one could have is or or an exploration that the students could undertake is to interview their own parents and grandparents at their home for example and document how thermal comfort expectations have have transformed over uh, the last couple of decades say which have involved of course advancements in technology but also advancements in the manipulation of our expectations by uh, popular media and the cultural discourse around cooling as a status symbol or air conditioning as a status symbol have tolerance levels reduced are we getting more and more impatient under the same conditions that we have endured and and found ways to uh, to um, still feel comfortable despite those kinds of tropical heat conditions that we have always uh, had in in our in our country another debate that could uh, be undertaken is to speak to the students who most likely now uh, in most of our very plural sort of classrooms have come from different parts of india say you can have a student who's come from a very hot and dry region say from a rajasthan speaking about their thermal comfort expectations perhaps they are more tolerant of higher temperatures and drier conditions as compared to say a person say from uh, a cooler part of india say himachal pradesh for instance where they might be very intolerant of even you know warm conditions where 23 24 might be uncomfortable for them which alludes to the idea that different physiology different uh, genes and and uh, different even cultural histories lead to a diversity of thermal comfort expectations and there cannot be one single hegemonic view about thermal comfort those were all intellectual debates that can be had uh, with uh, with uh, students and with even uh, stakeholders outside the college um, such as the corporate citizens that we talked about here are action oriented uh, kinetic energy you know involving activities that could be used as well one would be doing a classroom survey of looking at whether men and women have factually verifiable different thermal comfort expectations this has been uh, studied quite exhaustively by researchers that when thermal comfort standards were designed for modern air conditioning systems those that process of defining the thermal comfort band was based on this notion uh, which was quite uh, legitimate at that time that most commercial spaces or offices are occupied by men and it is their thermal comfort expectations which found uh, emphasis and became the central organizing element of thermal comfort uh, across the world however that has been changing and now the users of thermal comfort are no longer just uh, uh, the male body type uh, women have uh, a legitimate presence uh, in in these kinds of spaces and their thermal comfort expectations are absent so this could be a survey to look at whether men and women have different kinds of thermal comfort expectations an interesting other activity that could be done is to uh simulate certain stressful situations or 
humorous situations or one that, ones that make students feel exuberant about things because these different states of mind actually affect your perception of thermal comfort. So if, for example, a student is not told what the real temperature of the air conditioning set point is, for instance, but is asked to uh, note down what their sensation of thermal comfort is based on the kind of mood you have created, right? So say by playing very soothing sort of music, you ask them to note down a certain temperature and then say something shocking that, by the way, you know, we have a pop quiz coming up tomorrow and you know, it's going to cover XYZ syllabus. Does their immediate, you know, the temperature that they feel, does that immediately transform because of the state of mind being different? This just alludes to the idea that thermal comfort is not a very static, um, uh, commonly defined entity. It is a, it is a variable uh, entity and, and transforms based on the perception of the person. One could do body kinesthetics, which is spot jogging, jumping jacks, other kinds of exercises in the classroom and then have students document what they feel the ambient temperature is. Uh, this again goes to prove that the person's state of mind is as important as the, the object. So it is a, a subjective experience, not just a purely objectively verifiable experience. Thermal comfort that is. One could also conduct uh, surveys and mapping exercises using worksheets to see whether different parts of their college campus, their do dorms and also their own homes are creators of variable thermal comfort conditions. So say for example you have one part of the building which is towards the roof and most of the warm air in the building actually rises to the higher parts of the building. Do people in the higher parts of a building report less um, a thermal comfort compared to perhaps the basement or lower floors or people facing the west side versus the north side, east side. All these could be interesting things to map and learn from uh, in a very sort of experiential way for students. Other activities could be to look at how changing the thermal comfort setting of an air conditioner. So say an air conditioner in most homes or offices say is set at 22 degrees. One could measure the energy consumption at that moment for an AC set at 22 degrees and also correspondingly measure the thermal comfort one is feeling and then change the set point to say 24 or say even 26 degrees and see whether the thermal comfort really does drop off uh, in a way that we had assumed and is the energy conservation benefit adequate to justify a higher setting without any compromise in thermal comfort. And, uh, one could also visit modern glass buildings in the, in the vicinity of the college or their homes to speak to the uh, occupants, the, the citizens who uh, populate these spaces, whether they feel that their modern glass building is an enabler of thermal comfort or a hinderer of thermal comfort. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with us uh, on our email addresses or through our portal fairconditioning.org. Thank you. Thank you.